Republicans around the country are continuing their fight to sharply restrict what schools teach about our history of enslavement and racism. And one of the most recent bills shows exactly why you actually need more teaching, not less. A newly elected GOP lawmaker in the state of Virginia introduced a bill this week that bans the teaching of so-called divisive concepts. One of those banned concepts is that Virginia and the U.S. are, quote, systematically racist or sexist, which is a problem because the truth is we are. <laughs> Systemic racism and sexism are totally real. The bill also requires teaching the U.S. founding documents, and it lists one of those documents as... The first debate between Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. There is a slight problem here. The bill names the wrong Douglass, Frederick Douglass. And he, Frederick Douglass, was a black man who escaped slavery and rose to become an author and a leading abolitionist. And most people at home know that, because most people at home know who Frederick Douglass is and that it is not the one in the Lincoln-Douglass debates. He, that was Stephen Douglas, a white politician whose image you can see on this commemorative plaque on the right at one of the debate sites in Illinois. That Douglas argued that slavery should be allowed in the new U.S. states, which Lincoln opposed. And the fact that the Virginia lawmaker got this wrong, specifically saying it was Frederick Douglas also, shows us why this movement against teaching the truth about racism is actually quite dangerous. But it can be amusing when they make these kinds of mistakes. Joining us now is Hassan Jeffries. He's an associate professor of history at The Ohio State University. Professor, what does this mistake in this bill over the very famous Lincoln-Douglas base tell us about the movement to restrict how schools accurately teach American history? It tells us that we should leave the teaching to teachers. Uh, and get the politicians and elected officials, especially those who are driven by a particular political agenda uh, that is designed to prevent uh, students and people from learning about, as you pointed out, uh, the ways in which race and racism have shaped the contours of American society and continue to shape the contours of American society and are simply a function of individual bias, but are rooted uh, in the systems and structures that govern our society. I, I had to laugh uh, when I saw it because, you know, this is, this is silly people being silly. Uh, but it is serious, as you pointed out, because the consequences for this kind of legislation are really deep uh, and wide. We probably shouldn't put silly people in office. It's just a thought. I mean, you know, it, it, just one thought I had help. on a front. Uh, you know, I, it's just one thought I had today, and, and I'm thinking that would be a good first step. Um, Additionally, though, I think you hit on something that's really important, which is that we have to understand systemic racism. We have to understand it so that we don't perpetuate it. I mean, what are the folks and the elected folks that are proposing these laws? What are they actually afraid of? Why are they afraid of young people and children and a new generation learning about systemic racism and the ways in which you can dismantle it? What do they fear here? Uh, the very fact that we have young people, uh, and not just African Americans, right? I, I think the great fear is that for the first time, especially coming on the heels of the protest that followed the murder of George Floyd in the summer of 2020, uh, in June and July of 2020, I mean, we saw 30 to 40 million people taken to the streets, and they weren't only demanding Zerlina justice for the victims of police violence, they were also calling for ending systemic racism. Now, that was different. Now, black folk have been calling for ending structural racism, institutional racism for generations. But when you got little Kylie and little Kyle going home, talking to their mom and dad in the suburbs, saying, we got to end, what's this systemic racism thing we got to end? That shook political conservatives to the core because they knew that if they were being told that they had to address the issue of systemic racism, that means they had to change something. They had to change fundamental structures in American society. And so the way they pushed back, the way they saw uh, the path forward of doing nothing, of maintaining the status quo, was to convince people that systemic racism wasn't real. That's where we get this whole uh, uh, you know, divisive issues. We're not going to talk about systemic racism. Critical race theory is telling us that all these problems exist. White people are to blame for everything evil in the world. And it's like, no, what they really want is not to have to deal with the issue of systemic racism. And if you can convince people that it's not real, then, of course, you don't have to do, you don't have to do anything about it. 
We talk a lot on this show about how the Republican Party is becoming more authoritarian and anti-democratic. And again, to be clear, you know, this movement, it's anti-democratic. The voting rights bill that we talk about every night is about the fact that we want to protect American democracy, not, you know, protect the prospects of the Democratic Party. That's not what this is about. So how does the movement against teaching real, accurate American history tie into the growing threat of authoritarianism that we're seeing in this moment? Well, if we take the example of the Virginia um, representative uh, and that legislation, which is all copycat legislation, it, it's all similar. Uh, they just copy and paste in from one state legisla legislation legislator to another. Um, what we saw in that was like, you know, they're saying, oh, well, you teach the uh, it's okay to teach these founding documents, right? These are the documents upon which our democracy is founded and based. You start with the Declaration of Independence. But these are also white supremacist documents, right? Even in the Lincoln-Douglas debates, the Stephen A. Douglas debate. Stephen Douglas, as you pointed out, is like, hey, I'm for slavery. Don't mess with slavery, right? <laughs> Allow it to expand. And even and even uh, Abraham Lincoln, right? G good old Uncle Abe. Right. What does he say? He's like, I don't believe the seven debates. He's like, I don't believe in uh, African-American equality. I don't believe that black folks should be given uh, basic citizenship rights. I mean, so you can be an abolitionist and still believe in white supremacy. So, yeah, let's talk about these founding documents. Uh, by all means, let's go from the Declaration mm -hmm. of Independence to the American Constitution all the way to and through uh, the Lincoln-Douglas debates. But they don't want to have that conversation. They still want to deal with the myth of American exceptionalism, there may have been some things that ups up, so upset some folk in the past, but by all means, America always gets better and triumphs. And that's just a myth. And Americans don't like to be mm -hmm. indicted with the truth. And the truth is, we have a hard past that we have to confront. It's, it's so funny to think about um, how, how they think the Constitution, like it, there's no, there's no racism in that. And they're like, I'm an originalist. And I say, I'm not. I'm a black woman. I, I'm not an originalist. Uh, Professor Hassan Jeffries, it's always good to have you. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.